It's finally back and they're awesome. Microsoft has finally released a set of tools that we used to have back in the days of Windows 95. For those who remember, there are sets of utilities, they are free and they enhance your Windows experience. It's Windows 10 and the Microsoft Power Toys are back. Let me tell you why you need to install these. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Leron Sega, where I talk about Wi-Fi and gadgets and tech tips and phones and how to. If you're into that kind of stuff, hit that subscribe button below and let's get on to today's show. So what are the Microsoft Power Toys? Well, originally there were sets of utilities that were coded by Microsoft and they didn't really make it into the official Windows release. Today it's a project that welcomes contribution from coders, from those who want to do bug fixes, from those who want to help with specs and documentation. People can contribute to it as long as they follow the contributor's guidelines. The cool stuff is going to make it into the Power Toys and they're going to get better and better over time. Right, let's go grab the software. You're going to head off to github.com slash Microsoft slash Power Toys. Link will be in the description below. So as you scroll down, you're going to see an overview and this tells you a little bit about what the software does. But of course, we're going to go through all this shortly. Now, what you're looking for is a link called Download and Release Notes. It's in the middle there. So simply click on that. And when that comes up, you're going to scroll a little bit down in that page and you're looking for the installation file. Now, you can download the zip file or you can download the installation file, the MSI. I just do that and then simply run the software and then install it as you would any other normal software. OK, next up. OK, now that the software is installed, you'll find it at the bottom there next to the clock. This is what it looks like. And the first thing what we're going to do is going to start with general. I don't want to have that notification popping up every single time. So I'll just leave it as administrator and everything will simply work. Now, I want to make sure that I run it as startup because I want this facility to be available to me every time I use my Windows machine. OK, so a couple of little things to play with. The important stuff is on the left hand side. This is what it does. Let's start off with the fancy zone, which sounds fancy already. Before we play with the fancy schmancy zones here, we know that Windows functionality allows you to snap windows and snap applications onto your screen. So I'm going to open up Notepad, Calculator and the browser. I know that if I take the browser and I go right off the screen, little gray box pops up. If I let it go, it puts that on half a screen. You have this functionality right now without installing anything further. It's just Windows default stuff. If you take it to a corner, it will put it into a little box there and then the last bit gets held up by the last application. Okay, but that is pretty good, but of course it's pretty limiting as well. This is where the fancy schmancy zones come in. Go click on that, fancy zones. I enable that. And now I've got something called the launch zone editor. Now look at what this does. This gives me the ability to customize what I can snap and wear on my screen. So let's enable one of these. I'm going to show you what it looks like in practical terms. Let's apply that. And now when I hold the shift, you can see it gives me those three new zones. Zone 1, Zone 2, Zone 3. If I take it and I simply drag it to one of the zones and let it go, there we go. It just snaps in place. Pretty darn epic. But wait, it gets even better. Because what I can do is launch the Zone Editor again. Now, I don't want three windows only. What I want to do is I want to have four, five, six, seven, however many I want. And I can simply add, keep adding those blocks. But this is epic. Watch this. you got to customize, create a new option edit that one i give it a little name let's just say i'm going to call it my work for whatever reason something that you can identify and now i can create my own zone so where do i want position number one to be well let's put it in the top left here we don't need to make it so big let's make it kind of small here okay perfect now let's add another zone position number two where do we want position number two to be I can make that smaller as well. Let's put it under position number one. Okay, drag that a little bit, make it look a little bit pretty, even though this is not the best thing. Okay, and there we go, position number three. I mean, you get the idea. You are able to customize your own screen. Now, if I hold the shift button down, there we go. There's my new layout, position number one, two, and three. There we go. By the way, of course, you can add more zones. I'm just showing you three positions, just to keep it simple. And voila, 
my screen is set up. So if you're live streaming, if you're doing some work stuff, you can have a zone specifically for each one of your applications. Now I'm using the shift, but you can actually customize it in different ways to access those various zones. Next up, let's go check out the File Explorer preview. This is for people who use SVG files and Markdown files. If you don't, don't even worry about this. Let me show you what that is. I'm going to enable it, open up the Explorer. Here I've got a couple of options. I've got a PNG file, but you see I've got an SVG file as well. I'm going to enable the preview pane. Now when I click on each one of those, I can see the preview, but now I can also see the preview for an SVG file. If you have no idea what this is, you're probably not using it now. Just ignore it and just don't enable it. That's the nice thing about the power tools. If you use it, enable it. If you don't, simply disable it. But this one I certainly do, the Image Resizer. Oh, this is superb. So enable this. And essentially what it allows you to do, just as the name says, allows you to resize images. You can have various sizes. You can even customize and create your own one. Here are my images again. What I do is I select my image, right click on it. The hardest part is finding this little guy. There we go, there it is, image resize. And I simply select the size that I want to resize it to. Now that I've selected it to large, click apply, and then it resizes the image immediately. When you go back into the settings, you've got a whole bunch of things that you can play with. You can have the defaults, what kind of file format it's going to be. If you understand what all this is, you can really play with it and customize it. I do like the option underneath, which gives you the file name. Let's just scroll down to that. So here you can see what is the new file name going to be. You can give it the name, the kind of size that it's got, just by using these little percentage signs. But speaking of file renaming, oh, this is legendary as well. Enable all these things, just depending on your situations and what you want to see. But what this is, it allows you to rename multiple files. I'm going to rename all of them. So let's highlight all of them. Right click on it. Choose rename. And now it says, hey, what do you want to search for? So it's got here something Microsoft underscore Outlook. I want to get rid of that. So Microsoft underscore Outlook. And I want to replace it with, let's just say the techie guy. Type that in. And now it shows you what is the before and what is the after. So I'm using search, like you're almost your Excel find and replace situation, exactly the same, but for file names. And I've got a whole bunch of options I can select. I mean, this is gonna save you hours and hours and hours especially for the graphic designers out there who do this regularly. Pretty cool that it's available. Let's go back to the one we skipped over, the keyboard manager. You want to enable that if you want to remap any keys on your keyboard to be something else. Now, before you say, I don't need to use this, look at your keyboard. There are certain keys, like for example, the number sequence on the right hand side of the keyboard, the numpad, I don't use that at all. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remap my number zero on the numpad. Instead of doing nothing because I just don't touch it, I'm going to remap that whenever I press the zero, it now becomes another delete key. So that's pretty epic to do. Now you can also do this with things like shifts and controls and combinations. So as we move on to the next thing, we're going to look at Power Toys Run. And we definitely want to enable this. This is cool. Again, this is a glorified search and results option, very much like you have the search on the bottom left hand side. Now, every time I press control and space, look what happens. So let me move this out the way, press control and space. And in the middle comes up this glorious search option. I simply type anything in, let's just say notepad and everything with the word notepad comes up. You can search for text, you can search for applications, and of course you can select how many of these results you want to see. As we head down to the shortcut guide, you want to enable that. Now we know the Windows has got lots of shortcuts, but we tend to forget what each one does. With a shortcut guide, for example, you long hold the Windows key and it shows you what are the various shortcuts. So Windows S opens up the search. Windows X, for example, opens up the quick menu. So nice to have the guide at your fingertips.
For more Windows tips and tricks, check out these videos down here. Hit the head below to subscribe if this is your first time here. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I'll see you in those videos. Let's go.